Hello and welcome to How to Win the Lottery Season 9 Eco Module, Something New Under the Sun by Alexandra Kleeman. I'm Joey Lewandowski. I am Shred. Shred, you sound tired. Well, uh, uh, I just got out of work and drove an hour after working for eight hours. So Mm -hmm. then we're going to do this for an hour and then I'm going to drive an hour home and then go to bed and then go back to work. So I, mean, I don't know what you want from me. Sounds like I, a blast. I don't know why. You, yeah. Look, I'm just I, making conversation. What is, what, what, is, what is this confrontational I'm making beginning? conversation here because if I don't make conversation here, we get right into the You're episode. And me, you go, wow, yeah, yeah. talking about the book already. And just like, well, yeah, no, yeah, I'm yeah. trying to make conversation. Okay. All right. I had another conversation starter yesterday. And I was like, he's going to hate that one. And I, I don't remember what it is. Do you I, think of conversation starters? Not really. Mind? But something came to my mind. I'm like, oh, that's how I'll start the episode. I was like, yeah. no, he's going to hate that. All right. Well, what about Dr. Katz, professional therapist? Did you ever watch that show? I did not. All right. Well, I guess I'll fuck off. <laughs> we are here with another pretty depressing eco book. Yeah, my kind of my kind of eco book. My big question to you before we talk about the book, and mm-hmm. I want I don't want to go into specifics here, but do you like the non-ending? Yeah. Or do you want to cover that later? No, I like. Yeah, I like it. Okay. But also, like I think that this is a book that is structured very strangely yes because it is at least three completely different things yeah right it is a uh hollywood satire like like robert altman's the player um Mm -hmm. it is a climate disaster novel yep uh uh which ties into it being kind of like an la noir um, it is an L.A. noir a la uh, Raymond Chandler, Robert Town, or even Chinatown? Ver- Ver- Veronica Mars. Also well, just Chinatown. Well, Robert Town wrote Chinatown, so oh. that's what I was talking about. <laughs> I'm such a fucking kidding. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Yeah, Robert, Robert Town, Town yeah, yeah, wrote yeah, yeah. Chinatown. He's just yeah. like, ooh, I need a— Yeah, Robert Chinatown. Uh, Big Veronica Mars thing, yes. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, very Veronica Mars. and It's and also very timely, sort of. I mean, I don't know if it's, people are still be talking about when this episode comes out, but like quite, quite on set. set. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was thinking about that, too, because I just— you know, I, I watched that uh, entire entire thing. I did um, not and do not plan to. I know sort of broad strokes about it, but yeah, it seems I, depressing. Well, I watched it kind of because I have a i i had I have this fascination with Dan Schneider because I don't know any of those shows. Neither do I, and I don't like. I was too old for all. Uh, too old for Drake and Josh. Too old for iCarly, Zoe One Hundred and One. We talk about this on Too Fast. Like there is like such a tight window of like mm-hmm. a two. Like if you're like a year too late, there's an entire new group of like stars and shows yeah, that like yeah, you, yeah, yeah. unless you have like a younger sister, uh-huh. you just miss completely, uh-huh. and like it's wild. I I knew like the original all that right, yes. and, and in Good Burger and stuff like that, and yep. then a little bit like I was still too old for it, but I was aware of the Amanda Show right. and yeah, Amanda yeah, yeah. Bynes mm-hmm. as, as like a growing movie star. But like Jeanette McCurdy, Drake mm-hmm. and Josh, like that's completely beyond Don't me. Know. Yep. But Dan Schneider, I know from Head of the Class. Oh, which is too old. So it's weird. Like it's that's too old for me. But the other stuff is too young. Yeah, for yeah, me. yeah. So Dan Schneider was uh, a uh, just one of the high school kids in Head of the Class. So oh, he's an I, actor. I, I know him as a child actor. Oh. Um. But I think he's like not like child actor, quote unquote. He's like eighteen, twenty years. Okay. Old. But yeah, still, yeah. Um. But so I, I know him as a child actor. So to think that him as an adult abusing child actors, it, it like adds this like weird dynamic, really strange twist yeah. to the entire to the entire thing because. You know, I still when I see him in my head, I see like a young, a, young I see a high school student. Yeah. Um, so, so it's, it's Hollywood satire, eco disaster. Uh, L.A. Noir. L.A. Noir. Um, and that's that's those are the three big. It's ones, also right? a little bit like another module we did is kind of an internet book, in a way that does not feel real, and in a way that also it it bails. On, on it being it an internet book well, Where, I think, I think it, it, in a way it, that I'm not like entirely satisfied. It kind of mails on a lot of stuff in an interesting kind of way. Yes. I, yeah, in a way that I, I, I like and don't like. I agree. Um, so what is something new under the sun about? It is about a guy who wrote a novel called Elsinore Lane, um, which is obviously like Hamlet reference. Uh, and his novel has been optioned to be made into a film. And so part of his deal is that he gets – 
part of his contract is that he gets uh, like a PA credit. He can he can either be a PA or he can have someone that he wants to be hired. So he right. decides and he thinks that this is his like in into Hollywood and a new career and a new life for him and his family, which is kind of falling apart. Which also moment. seems insane. Like to think that that's like your way in, like as like an adult man, as an author to start at the literal bottom of the totem pole. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's like, you know, ignorance of any given industry. Sure. But he also like expects more respect than he gets mm-hmm. as the writer, which I think anyone that observes Hollywood knows that writers don't really get any respect at all and and this is backgrounded by the climate disaster of california droughts and wildfires so uh there's like the ever-present threat of fire all around them in almost every every scene um when they're in california and there is a drought which means that they um have no water as as a solution to this problem, they um, create a synthetic water called Wat R W A T hyphen R. Yeah, which um, in my head I just pronounced like water. Yep. Uh, which is like funny to me because it's like the when the characters are speaking, it's you know because you're seeing what's written, but you wouldn't pronounce it right differently. Which is like a funny little trick. Um, but this synthetic water is uh. You know, it, it sort of hi- highlights the the stuff that we talked about a lot in the in the overstory, which is um, a technological solution to a problem largely created by technology. Right. Uh, and and this book, what I, what I like about this book is that it like sort of cynically approaches that and recognizes that that solution is another kind of undoing. Well, I think it's also like. There is a cynicism that it's not just that it doesn't work, but it's that these people are going to capitalize on it and make you possibly sick or not give a shit. They're just they're in it for the profits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also, I mean, like you know, like all novels, it's a novel about capitalism and Marxism and language. Well, anything that's about capitalism is about Marxism. I do think that there is. I think the the number one thing this this book is about. I almost said the movie. The book is about is what we will do to distract ourselves from the world falling apart around us. Kind of. Yeah. Explain. Patrick being this writer coming from the East Coast, going to the West Coast, being this outsider, does not understand why everyone thinks that just drinking water with a, the, the synthetic water yeah. is normal. Um, he thinks it's all insane. Like he understands why it's happening. There is no natural mm-hmm. water, but he thinks it's insane. It's weird. And they're all just like, no, man, I was early adopter. Like I was in there from before we even had to do it. I think the whole Reddit thing or the Reddit substitute of people like distracting themselves, like again, not giving a shit that the world is coming to an end. They are just obsessively rewatching a show for clues about something. And some of those people take into this conspiracy theory that like, it's actually predicting the end of the world or whatever. And it's a children's TV show too. It's like, so it's like you have a bunch of a, presumably adults, yep. like, like obsessing over a child's TV show. And then also I think somewhat the East coast stuff, Allison and Nora in this camp in upstate New York are, they're there to like kind of commune with nature, but they're also like, we're just not gonna think about it. We're gonna go away and just like tuck our head in the sand, sort of. And they're like, we're gonna we're gonna remember. We're gonna pay tribute and respect to the things that we lose, but like, really, kind of do nothing about it. Yeah. And I think that's kind of like the the real through line. I was trying to figure out like if like as I was reading, if the Reddit stuff was going to pay off, and I don't know that it ever was going to. I think it's just like these are this is kind of like a sickness that people have of just like becoming too obsessed about the wrong kind of things. Yeah, and and you. Uh, like it's interesting because you, <laughs> the way that it's described, you really do get the sense that there was something going on on that TV show. Like it, and, and that is its own thing because that also like sounds very much like uh, uh, no sleep or um, do you know no sleep? Like it's the Reddit thread of of like horror stories. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Or or like any of those other things. Like it it seems like you know like the most famous one of those stories is a fake story about a spongebob squarepants episode where squidward kills himself mm, is that um, real is, or, is the spongebob episode, yeah. episode real it's not but it's like it's one of those things that was made up and and is was written as a story in such a way that reading it you might think that it's real got it right and so it became like very very popular and and so I don't really know the detail because that's not like that's sort of like the opposite of the kind of community that I want to be a part of. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Um, but it's like it's fascinating in a weird way. I think also that I saw the TV glow um 
movie like kind of is is indul is indulging that those kinds of obsessions obsessions mm. with television shows that like you know you think there's more to something than right. there is so you dig further and further and further into it and this all obviously there's like a slender man element to the story too right yes um so uh it is like you know the internet as reality reality as the internet like the merging of consciousness with the thing I didn't like about the internet stuff, and I think it's because we spend so much time in the internet module, is that it felt like every single commenter spoke with the same kind of voice. Uh, and maybe that was by design, like this is like a hive mind kind of thing. But yeah, it, people do speak with the same voice. But on, it felt forums, it didn't feel they? like like I just feel like and not that every everything's going to be amygdala tropolis, but I feel like there is like a type of internet that is like authentic and this is kind of just like yeah. not. I think there is not enough people like telling other people that they were going to like cut open their bellies you, you know like how, yeah, how like yeah. mean the internet gets even in the most innocuous spaces like she, she hasn't here like uh misguided not threats but threats like people like telling other people like fuck off or whatever like oh no i wasn't talking to you like there is like that kind of like yeah 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 it never gets as mean as it, as it right could be as, as i imagine like any forum for uh like a fandom gets yeah it's like fan it, like the, the that's the worst some of the worst parts of the internet are are you know, threads of people being obsessed with a pop culture thing. Cassie Keene, Kid Detective. Which is, it's it's sounds like a mixture of Veronica Mars and something kind of younger, more Nancy Drew-ish. But it, 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 it also seems, when I was reading it, I was picturing a Brian Fuller TV show. Mm, yeah. Right? It seems very much like his aesthetic. Yeah. Like ominous dark. But also bright. Right, like, like pushing well, pushing days is a very bright show, yeah. but there, but it has like a really like kind of dark. Concept. It's a blue velvety kind of thing, right? Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. I like this book. I, I'm trying to. There's something about it that didn't fully work for me, and I'm not exactly sure what that is. But I liked it. Um, I guess we should maybe talk about each individual sort of thing that it's about. Like as a, I think the Hollywood satire stuff. I think what I didn't like about it is that I think the Hollywood satire stuff was good and worked and was like something I was interested in. Like when it's starting with them around the pool, watching the cell phone footage or whatever on the phone and you're immersed in this world where this like this older guy with all these younger people around him and trying to make sense of like what's going on, who these people are. And then we go, we spend time with Allison. So as Patrick keeps drinking the water and slowly kind of descending into madness, the synthetic water and descending into madness, it makes sense that we can't follow his perspective anymore because mm. he is losing sanity and he's getting this early onset dementia that is caused by synthetic water. And so I understand that we need to shift the perspective, but I feel like the perspective shift didn't really work for me because like the Allison stuff is just too far removed and I didn't find it that interesting. Okay. Is that? Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I hear that. I think that the Allison stuff is necessary because it provides emotional ballast for Patrick. Um, if you don't have the Allison stuff and something for him to come home to, and also an East Coast that where people are like, th there's almost like a juxtapositional irony in that Patrick is living in California among the uh, wreckage of of climate change. Yes, um, and he is like seems for the most part blissfully unaware. Mm -hmm. Like he's, he doesn't, the people out there, aside from drinking the water, they've accepted that as reality. The people on the East coast are living in denial of that exact, uh, or, or they're like hyper aware of that exact reality that they're not living in. Yeah. So, so there's something, um, there's like a real East coast versus West coast perspective here that I think does feel accurate. And you have also, um, the daughter who's like precocious and having visions. Yeah, what do you think of her, her visions? Like, do you think like she is depicted like she's like nine, I think, and she she's like like there's a there's a moment in the book where Patrick realizes like only like a year or two ago like she wasn't like really fully a person yet. Like now she's like a person who has like thoughts and can question me, and like he's not sure how to think about that. But she's describing these like intricate, complex, sort of apocalyptic visions of a world. Yeah where her parents are either sick or missing or right. gone or changed or just all of humanity is gone. Like, well, I think there's a degree to which as a child, she doesn't have the, the filters and the like sort of protective lenses that, that adults have formed around themselves. So yeah. adult, adults like, you know, oftentimes ignore 
social change or climate change or anything anything in order to protect them themselves and the mm-hmm. world and the world they've built and as, as a child she is viewing the world through sort of uh more objective eyes and those objective eyes are are witnessing uh horror yeah horror about yeah. an apocalypse yeah. and, right, right in front of her which i think most a lot of people are witnessing now and and we mock it when when they do right like think of think of like greta thunberg and, mm-hmm. and like as for as many people like as as are like greta thunberg is a hero like just as many people are like fuck that child she yeah. can't have, like that child is trying to yeah. go to school why don't you like why don't you like learn something about life before you sh- start trying to tell me to, and it's like oh all right but she is correct She's like yeah. right about all uh-huh. of this stuff that she's talking about. So like maybe listen to the 13 year old because the 13 year old has not yet been blinded by the pursuit of capital and by like all of the materialistic stuff right. that, that uh, everyone else in the world is saying like, oh yeah, come to me with perspective when you get a job. And it's like, no, she has that perspective because she, because she, she doesn't have a job. Yeah. Cause yeah. she hasn't yeah. been like, she hasn't like had to reprioritize every single thing in her life to make it about like providing she a, can still stand up for what she cares for. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so it's, you know, um so that's uh uh Nora cuz like fulfills that role for me. Cuz I think that like the first time so Patrick calls her like there's a part of the book before he really goes before he loses his mind. He is panicked cuz his wife has just like there's backstory of the wife which we could talk about, but his his wife and his daughter have just gone somewhere and he doesn't know that she's just like we're leaving and like just because he's already on the west coast but she's like we're, we're going somewhere else and he's trying to figure out where they are and he keeps trying to call her she, he, she gives him a phone number and he calls her and one time when he calls her and they hang up it switches to her perspective and i'm just like this is interesting i don't know why yeah. this is happening mm-hmm. and i realized later it's because when he can no longer be a narrator essentially it gives us like a foot in the ground for over there so i get like yeah. I, I appreciated the earlier stuff when later stuff happened but I kind of wish we had more Cassidy stuff maybe in her perspective. But I also I thought it was kind of weird that there wasn't a parallel early. Like we never get Cassidy's perspective until we have to have her perspective. Well, the, the there is a degree to which Cassidy is the most interesting character in the book. And I think the reason why Cassidy is the most interesting character in the book is because like we have – sort of been doped up with the idea that celebrities are more interesting than regular yes. people. Right. And so like Cassidy's life is interesting because Cassidy does not live a typical life. And so a celebrity's reaction to uh, all of this stuff is going to be a little different. And then even especially now, especially because of the quiet on the, on the set stuff, there is like an extra interest in the perspective of a child star whose life has been, entirely uh uh sort of rearranged through the the vision of pursuit of wealth and and fame and all of these things she's sort of the opposite of nora right she doesn't have any perspective other than like her being this sort of objectified version of a of a human being that has to like you know, smile for her money. Like she's a 20 something that's sort of kind of maybe washed up cuz she had like she started in like an abysmal tank of a movie and i think she's essentially amanda Bynes, right okay. she, yeah. she's she's like a someone who was like a very talented child actor who had some some things that were not successful and then had some public things where yeah. people were like oh she's crazy and also like britney spears and then, you know right. they, yeah, they, yeah. They, there are lots of examples of this where it's like you know we don't uh allow those kids to mess up even though we put an unbelievable amount of pressure on them and forced them to mess up it's very strange it's it's a, a celebrity yeah celebrity is a but like especially like child thing. child celebrities yes. are like that that's something that is you know it's i i think we're we're, we're all fascinated with it because it, it is so far outside of the realm of a regular person's experience like i can't imagine being a nine-year-old and having people scream well like, i think oh what, i think one of the most interesting things that to me about the cassidy character is when she's talking about her first commercial she booked and like her fake tv dad was so loving to her and yeah, everyone was just yeah, like you're yeah, so yeah, yeah. talented you're gonna be in all this different uh-huh. stuff and she never had a real dad and like this guy is giving her so much love and affection and it's not like predatory but maybe it's predatory but e- either way she's just like i've never had this kind of attention before 
and then she gets recast. And every time she sees the commercial, she's bummed, but she's also like, man, that was that was such a good day. And like, there's there's this humanity, this sadness. But she sees that guy then giving that, that affection to a different girl that looks kind of like her, and she, but like a richer, wealthier version of yeah, her. So she doesn't have that affection in it. Yeah, but she of. still like reflects back on it positively, mm-hmm. which is. But we don't really get her perspective until she is truly fighting for humanity, where she is like looking for her sister. She's like, I'm talking to Allison. I don't have anybody. There's no one who would even want to see me. And so it's interesting that like we never get her as celebrity. Yeah. We see her as celebrity, but we never like are in her head as celebrity. We're yeah. in her head as like a lone person in a world falling apart. She also has a character arc because she goes from being someone who is like selfish and like entirely um driven by like preservation right she yep. like an interesting thing about cassie is that she doesn't drink the synthetic water so she like quite smartly is getting paid in real water um, which is wild yeah uh and so she like every day she gets this this real water but she's like kind of a jerk to to patrick who's like been named her driver and she's sort of mean to everyone around her she's a demanding uh and and like you know people recognize her as celebrity and stuff like that but we start the novel with this idea that she's like sort of selfish and driven by yep. preservation and all those things and by the end of the novel she's wandering the desert by herself looking for patrick to save him well she i think is also at some point being drugged with or has been taking water because she sees the guy in the gray suit yeah that that, that is, i i yeah that's an interesting really fascinating uh ending too because that could be it or it could be that that stuff is not water related Mm. so there is there are these facilities where people so the synthetic water affects a small fraction but still like thousands of people in california gives them rapid early onset dementia Mm -hmm. that seems you know like like regular like incurable but also it's it's what separates it from regular dementia is that it's a collective dementia the hallucinations are shared and they all see um, this man in a gray suit that's yeah, one and, of the and shared they see, things they see imaginary birds as yep. well by the end of the novel cassidy also sees this man in the gray suit although she has been very very careful to not drink any synthetic water right though brenda and uh what jeff it's brenda and jay brenda and jay um have been paying her in in supposedly real water Mm -hmm. Um, it's possible that they have have not been doing that well i think there's something also that like what's scary in the book is when you hear patrick on the phone to allison or to anybody and like he's saying sentences that are like in english but not coherent Mm -hmm. not what he wants to say not when he wants to say it and you see him deteriorating in front of your eyes but we never see someone see cassidy objectively so she might equally be falling apart, right? Like oh, that's she, true. Yeah. Like we're in her perspective somewhat, but like she only knows by comparison he is really falling apart. Mm-hmm. But I thought I think I thought one of the most interesting things, and this actually I didn't think about this until right now in terms of the pacing, but like in a touch of Jen, when there's like a big thing that happens like kind of halfway through the book, you're like, oh, this is not the book that I thought this was gonna be about. When like the Chinatown water plot is revealed with like 130 pages to go, I'm just like <laughs> Yeah. What the fuck is the rest of this book yeah, about? yeah, 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 yeah. It's very, it's very strange. It's very strangely structured, and and you don't. And I'm not sure it ever really reveals what it's about. It's the kind of thing that happens in a movie where it's like 15 minutes to go, where like the the villains unfurl their plot, and then either they win and like it's a downward ending, or somehow the hero overcomes and like it's a happy ending. But just like, all right, and then they just leave, and then there's another third of the book to go yeah there so this maybe goes into the thing that maybe it's not the water that jay is like deteriorating too like he is babbling nonsense i think their goal is just to get a lot of money however they can and escape to australia or new zealand Zealand to see the wallabies right there's a part with jay that i like i laughed so hard at where he's like um like brenda is like oh yesterday uh yesterday when cassidy and and uh and Patrick were here and they, they threatened all that stuff. And he just looks at her and he goes, I guarantee that didn't happen. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's very funny. And she was just like, well, then what happened instead? He's just like, well, as they say, the lady's always right. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. So he, and again, he is also drinking real water. He's not drinking the synthetic right. water, but he's having the same hallucinations and stuff like that. So it might, it might not be the water that is the synthetic water that is making those hallucinations happen. I mean, there's stuff that's really funny. That like, again, you take a step back, but like if you're indoctrinated into it or whatever, but just like on the bottle of like the cheap water to go or whatever, just like don't get in your eyes or nose. It's like, yeah. <laughs> why would you drink that then? And it has like, um, like it's, it's like, uh, Catch is like a small bottle of water that can fit in your hand. Yeah, or everything like was that. an afterthought. I, think. Oh, that, I, I, I highlighted that. It's just like everything was an afterthought going down, all the way down to like the catch rays, the thing to carry around that fits in the palm of your hand. It's just like, yeah, like most things. You can there's there's one thing that is not plot related, but made me laugh so hard because it felt like such an accurate representation of how every single person thinks. Like, I think everybody feels this way. I think it's either, is it Horseshoe? Is that the guy's name? There's Horseshoe in the arm. In the arm. So they're yeah. driving around and he's descri- he describes driving as oh, yeah. everyone that you passed is is like a weak-willed idiot and everyone that goes faster than you is a, suicidal, yeah, something is a self-suicider. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just like, that's so funny. Well, that's that was so, also that's really such funny. an accurate representation of how everybody feels when they drive. I mean, there's also something that like, even though, like, I know that like, the climate is falling apart. I don't think that we are suffering from like mass hallucinations, but it did make me wonder when they're in the car. Cause like they're suffering this, the water side effects too. Yeah, also that's super DeLillo. Like that whole bit is very, very, but DeLillo. like they get off the highway and they loop around and I'm just mm-hmm. like, how much highway traffic is people like this? That just like, there's cars everywhere. It's just like, people are just like looping and just, they yeah, don't know. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, yeah. earlier, the guy who's at the ice cream store, just like, I don't know what I want. Like, I don't, I don't I didn't come here for ice cream. He like leaves. He's like, you know, what would be really good right now. It's ice cream. Just like, this is like scary. Like that's creepy in a way that like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I thought that, and, uh, I mean, you know, I guess I'm keyed to see DeLillo everywhere, but, um, like I really did feel, especially in, in them looping them saying like, you know, the highway is a memory loop. You you yeah. see things and it reminds you what you're supposed to do. And then you do it and you get lost and you like, no one's ever lost on a highway cause they're always going the way that the highway is going. You know, the dialogue in this is not, it's not realistic dialogue. It's, it's Everyone talks for like very long yeah, time. Hi, hyper, hyper stylized, philosophical yeah. um, people speak in complete sentences that are really. Um, and they all kind dip, of sound similar to yeah, one another. It's, it's dense with idea. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, Cassidy's not really like that. She's like quick witted. Uh, she, she's like a, you know, like Kristen Bell and Veronica Mars. She's got, she's got the, the quips to go. Well, with there it. is something that I wonder again, if it's what Kristen you said Bell? before. Kristen Bell. Kristen right? Bell. What'd you say? No, I said Kristen Bell. What'd you think you said? I don't know. I, I, I was just questioning whether it was Kristen, Kristen Bell or Bell. something yeah, else. Yeah, Veronica yeah. Mars. There's something I wonder if like we are drawn to, if we think that she's more interesting because she's a celebrity, like Patrick is like compelled to like touch her and kiss her and like feel like oh, he's also hallucinating when he's doing it because one like some of the symptoms of the hallucination is, is like affection like inappropriate affection but also like that. is that that or is that because like this is someone that he has become obsessed with and to a different not him but like people have grown up with and have yeah. felt like they know even though they don't you know what i mean also the fact that people can get her nose as plastic surgery and she gets like eight bucks or it's just like yeah that's, that's crazy. really fascinating the the her the, the, that is like seeing your appendage in public is really interesting and odd but i wonder if like we are compelled if we think that cassidy is more compelling because like you said we just like celebrity or if she's actually written in a more compelling way or both yeah both both but but that stuff that like the the nose stuff like feels like um, very similar to the Ali Robottom book, right? This idea that, that like we're all like sort of sculpting ourselves to to match like public uh, opinion. There are a bunch of quotes in here that I like. There's one that I wanted to say like that goes back to the climate disaster thing, where early ish on like I think it's like 100 pages in. They say terrible, definitely, but it's not really an emergency, he thinks, putting on a signal and shifting it to the fast lane if you can drive around it. An emergency would be everywhere you looked, inescapable, some long-submerged animal intelligence would recognize it with fierce instinct. In an emergency, the mind would not drift aimlessly from daydream to distraction as he did now, as his did now, in search of something to grasp. But it's just like, no, everywhere around you, it is emergency. Like, people are losing their minds. And everything's the on world fire. is on fire. Yeah. There's no water. Yeah, but again, if you live in California, like, that's life especially if you I live know. in the san fernando valley right it's like there is fire on all sides a significant amount of time there's fire season right you have to deal with the ash you have to deal with learning how to breathe in it yeah um there's all, all that stuff and 
it's suicidal. There's a, there's a degree to which living there is suicidal. And also like weird, like you have to bury your head and saying like, just like, well, the freeway is log jammed or whatever, because there is a fire, a literal fire. And I'll just take an earlier exit off the t- and just like take surface roads. For, it's just it, the weird, like, yeah. And also, you know, like how much of this climate stuff is, uh, you know, you know, not all a percentage of it is caused by things like uh car culture Yep, and, and like Los Angeles is like, for sure. That's like car apocalypse. Well, right? especially when people are just literally driving around because they don't know where they're going Yeah, and just like looping on the highway. So what do you think of the sort of non ending? So Patrick has descended into full dementia, wandering into the desert. He's trying to wander the day. De- he's just trying to get by whatever he wanders off. Cassidy follows him. It starts to rain for the first time all book. She realizes, oh, I'm not going to be able to get out of here. I have to keep going forward. She sees the man in the gray suit. And that's kind of the end. Yeah. Also, like the earlier in the final chapter, it's like almost tree of life-ish where it's just like, here's the history of everything. And here's like evolution. And all of a sudden there's man and man's fucking everything up. (laughs) And I'm just like, this is like, because when that chapter started, I was like, Maybe we'll never see any of our characters again. Maybe it's just uh-huh. like Yeah, there's a real chance. And like there we do, but like there's a long time where it's just like, no, this is all just like Yeah. And eventually, kind of like in the overstory, things will go back to normal. Like the earth will heal. But for yeah. now, you Well, you know that I'm a fan of that kind of ending. Yes. I if if what I kind of didn't understand uh what i would have done yeah in a very horror movie way because this is always my opinion in horror movies too is i would have just gotten in that van and driven east and kept going east until you can get real water Mm. i would not be on that loop i would just drive to colorado or something well that i think you that that would mean that you are not infected by water or whatever is infecting you Yeah, yeah and also like i think cassidy and all those kind of people would be afraid to leave everything that they've ever known i guess so but cassidy's house has already been destroyed well it gets destroyed in the book yeah yeah so just get in that car and go do you think it's weird that to get i mean she's getting paid in like a lot like a van's worth of water every day for 60 days but she's going to use that to like fill a swimming pool like it feels mm. maybe wasteful but also I, no, for sure yeah i don't know would you drink synthetic water uh no no, I mean, I guess you, you end up having to, right, if it's a thing that you have to do. But I would be very wary of it. I mean, what it, it, well, I'll say this about it. They talk about like the, they, talk, they talk about water having salt in it, but like Dasani has like salt in it to like encourage you. And, and Smart Water has electrolytes added to it, and I drink that. And there's, yeah. uh, But this remind you know what this reminded me of um, more than anything is that um, so when he drinks water, um, I have to thicken it. Yeah. So then he ends up with something that is water but it is it has the texture of honey and so you made a face because well, because it's insane well i'm thinking it's about i'm just so thinking, i'm unnatural. thinking about the way that they describe it in the book where it's like this looks like water it's sold as water but it doesn't like yeah. move or look well that's the thing it's just a is little that, bit is off. that it's so unnatural yeah that um it tastes it, there's there's no change in the taste it just tastes like water it's just thicker and he has to drink thicker water because um his muscles don't work like he you know when you swallow something it goes down the wrong pipe yeah like if he, he, he will his muscles don't know that anymore so they will just send the water into his lungs if if he's drinking thin water but when he drinks the thick water it goes the right the, the, right, the, right, the right way yeah that doesn't change the fact that his entire life he's just drank regular water and so when he has a cup of water like an eight ounce cup it will take him 12 hours to drink that's so crazy because you can't because it's like it's so unnatural to yeah. want to drink honey thick liquid it's so weak so so like when i was reading this and it was like oh it's sticking on his tongue and it's like he, he still feels like sandpaper in the back yeah. of his throat or like you know you could feel it moving around in your mouth and not and 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 it doesn't like they use the word mouth feel but it's like i i just kept thinking of with the water that he's drinking that has been unnaturally thickened so that he has to drink it. And then, and then because he, he has like the old person's resistance to drinking water anyway, yep. he's like in constant danger of dehydration and things like that. So it's like, he's living this life where water is an essential part, 
but also they've made water so difficult for him to consume that it's like this complicated battle every day to just be like, just drink the fucking water. But like I understand and and right. really sympathize with him because like I wouldn't want to drink that shit either. No. It's so unnatural. And it that. seems like work. Yeah. And it shouldn't be that. Yeah. I do think that a thing that this book does get really right is the way that they would package expensive versions of this same water. Mm-hmm. Like with like twist it into the shape of a diamond or when they go to the factory and just like this is the hundred like this is yeah. this is the stuff that boils at the right temperature i mean do you i you know we lived through the um maybe you're young for it but like i feel like i remember specifically like when fuji water people really started drinking fuji water it was when i was in high school fiji water fiji water fiji yes. water fiji water when i was in high school and people would drink that and it was like this expensive yep. like artisanal yep. bottle of water and i i always uh i i think i maybe had had it like twice or three times in my life and i've always thought like this this tastes weird to me i mean there is something still you go to like a quick check or like a convenience store and it's like you can get this the store brand 99 cent bottle or you can get like for 4.99 like a smart water or something just like the packaging is nicer it kind of connotes weirdly wealth even though it's not expensive right and you're well, like water, I, I want to yeah, get this water has always uh like you can buy really expensive bottles like glass bottles of water at restaurants instead of getting the tap water yeah uh the the rise of bottled water in our lifetime is one of the truly fucked things because it's and like i drink i drink bottled water um mostly smart water actually to help with your brain yeah, yes, to help with my brain. Uh, no, to to because it's convenient and it's like awful because the, the it's it's in a plastic bottle yep. and and there's so many things that are that, that that's wrong with it. But also like the idea that humans don't just have an innate right to water is 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 like one of the truly dystopian ideas of a climate apocalypse yes. that, that like you know you have people buying up water rights which is there, there's something so innately reprehensible about that that you, you you like you hear that like some billionaire is buying up the water rights from some some country and you there's like this just instinctual revulsion to mm-hmm. it because it because the way that i read that is that guy's buying that water so that he can exploit a group of like yep. people that are dying from a drought yep. and and you know so sell them back their own water at a markup so there but but there is also like this monsantoy idea about how synthetic water could be the savior of that synthetic water could the same way that like monsanto was crossbreeding um crops to make them you know blight resistant and and insect resistant things like that and and like i read a book called uh uh uh, let them eat promises um which was a book about uh the hunger problem in america in the 1960s and they were talking about Monsanto as like legitimate heroes. Mm-hmm. Like this is like a like a, a really leftist book talking about the, this problem. And then, and then they were like the heroes from the Monsanto Corporation are doing this. And now we feel a li- like at least like environmental people feel a little bit differently about Monsanto because that that stuff all feels very dystopian. But there is a way that like the synthetic water, it's appealing because it could save us. Mm. Right, and we're going to be undone by the things that can save us. That that by by being tricked into thinking that these things can save us. The same way that we were like sort of tricked into the belief that a nuclear bomb could save us. The same way that we were tricked into like all of these different beliefs. And like every worst thing that's ever happened in the world comes from somebody saying like this is the way that life gets better. Well, I do remember when bottled water first was in grocery stores. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, was, I was probably eight or nine or 10. Like it was in like late nineties, maybe. Does that feel right? Or is that, I mean, I'm sure, the, you know, maybe not first, but like widely popularized. Yeah, yeah. I remember thinking, even as a kid, like who would buy this? Right. Cause you can just drink tap water at home. And then somehow the water I had drank my entire life no longer tasted good to me because purified water that I had to pay for uh-huh. was water. And this yeah. was like, well, this t- tastes like minerals. It's like, yeah, but you drank that for 10 years without any kind of issue. And there's also there, – there's a degree to which it's like a conspicuous consumption issue. I remember my friend Nick who was a waiter telling me about like 
when he would wait on tables of people who are like on dates or something like that, he would, he would oh. be like, he'd be like, Oh, do you want the, um, would you like the bottled water? Or do you want tap? Oh, he would say it like that. <laughs> yeah. But like the implication being that like you're cheap. If you want the tap, I got to tell you, and I went out to a bar recently and the way that the waiter asked what kind of water we wanted, I thought I was getting the free water and she came out with what was going to be a $9 and 50 cent 24 ounce bottle of water. And I was just like, as soon as she brought this like ornate blue, like you can get for $3 he at Whole Foods. Back. No, I was, cause she had it already on capital. Just oh, like, yeah. I was like, gotcha. Ah, oh, fuck. Like, just, she upsold you on water. And I said, I was just like, as soon as she left, I was just like, I made the wrong choice. Like it's yeah. just, it's just water. And like, yeah, you just like bring me like, tap we're, water. We're, ha- we're out having drinks. Like we're not, we're not there to have the water, right? Like we're just there like as like this, the side thing. I'm just like, I don't want to pay $9 for water. Like I'm fine with tap when I go out. Yes. If I'm going to pay for water, I'm going to have like sparkling. Like I'm going to have it like bubbly. Mm-hmm. I'm not paying for bottled water. I was just like, Oh no. But she, yeah. she said it in a way that I was just like, right. I think I said, maybe she said still. And I was just like, that's, I don't think she maybe, she, maybe she didn't say tap as an option. Ah. And I was just like, she's like sparkling or still. And I was just like, oh, still. And then as she came out, she's like, oh, that's devious. Yeah. You got, you got wow. upsold on, on some water. Shitty. Um, I mean, that's the, the future. It's the present. It's, it's also the, the it's present. A, yeah. It's, it's, it's the present and the inevitable future. Um, I don't know. Do you have any final thoughts on this, on this book, which I, I, I like this book quite a bit. Um, and I like it more so. Even more so because I think it's like a little quote unquote sloppy, and I mean sloppy in the non pejorative. Oh, so way. I was saying before we started, you re- you read you two can have a body like mine. Yes, and and her first books, yeah, and, and her short story collection too. Are they? Do you like them more than this? Or how, what are they? Ooh. Is the style the same? Like, no, what? this is significantly quote unquote easier because it seems um, like when you search Alexander Kleeman online. This book is almost like an afterthought. Like everything is, is YouTube. Oh, you can have a that's like unfortunate. Um, Maybe not like an afterthought, but like that's the thing that comes up first. Yeah, uh, that's a much. I, I think that's a more difficult book. Okay, I think that is a book that is. Uh, is it fiction? Yeah, it's fiction. Um, it's more. It's more like driven by language and by like technique. Mm. In this book, this book is uh, like a pastiche of a number of different styles, but it's also really plot driven and and has like a lot of genre elements. Whereas that doesn't so much. Interesting. Yeah, I think that's a harder book, but but uh, maybe a better book. But also, like I, I don't hold against anyone a shifting of style, and and so I think that like this book is really interesting because you have uh, a writer who is is trying a completely different style in her second novel, um, which is I think very good. I think this is a very good book, and and I I like that it switches between styles and I like that there are a lot of loose ends that sort of don't don't get uh you know tied up at all uh and I like that the answers are not easy and I like that it has it it is like you know properly cynical about the prospects of of sa- us being saved from climate disaster yeah I think one thing I would imagine one thing we will see over and over again this season if you're writing about this kind of things that like the answers not being easy is like going to be a theme that cop- pops up. If like you're, if you're writing, if you're taking the time to write a book about like the world is ending, we need to fix things. Yeah. You're not going to like take a cop. I don't like, no, oh, it's, it's easy to do. Just, you know, well, recycle. Well, uh, the, the oh. m- land of milk and honey kind of did. Yeah, that's true. Like it, it, it was just like, Oh, and then the machines fixed everything. And we, we figured it out, and, and it's like the, the problem solving happens off page, which is like, you know, have you ever read any Robert Heinlein novels? A few, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, the thing that always happens in his books, I don't, maybe he just, like, does not like writing action, but, like, his main character will get knocked unconscious, and then the war will happen, and he'll wake up at the end and be like, did we beat them? And it's like, yeah, we beat them, and it's like, oh, I missed the whole war. Um, like that notoriously, like I, that, that's how, that's the climax of Starship Troopers. Like, Honestly, that's, that's what happens. I respect it. Like, cause I think he's just like, I don't want to, I don't want to write a big battle scene. Look, that's a different kind of book. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like the book. I look, it's going to be hard 
for any book to follow the overstory. I mean, that's that's true. The overstory is a generational book. I think Alexandra Clayman has written two really, really good novels and oh, the short story is good too. Yeah. I don't yeah. I I, I don't have I mean all short stories are gonna be hit or miss kind of well I don't have I can't recall. I recall liking it, but I can't okay. recall like the specific, specific stories, stories. Yeah. I think she's got like a really, really long, interesting future. Cool. And I'm gonna like she's she's an author who I will uh, read from now until you know, until whenever she stops writing or um and I, I something that I noticed a couple years ago is that a lot of uh authors at the same time that were coming out with really interesting books, uh like e- young women authors, like all had their first names were all starting with the letter A. Like Ali Robot. In, in 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 but in very quick succession, it was like Amelia Gray, Alyssa Nutting, Alexandra Clayman. And I think there were one or two other ones too, but it like seemed like all at the exact same time these books all came out, and I was just like, "Whoa, what's going on here with these with these writers?" I was looking up her other books as you were saying them, and I feel like the imitations cover I've seen before. I don't know why or why are intim- intimations. Also, apparently, it was ten cents as a Kindle book in the last month. Oh, damn! That's didn't, too didn't cheap. Get it. You should, it shouldn't be that cheap. Maybe it was a typo. I don't know. Like it's ten bucks now, which feels appropriate. Yeah, ten cents is like too cheap. We have an email address, lottery at Kate. Did you pick, were you picturing somebody as Cassidy yeah, or I, as um, Patrick? I, yeah, I was picturing, uh, uh, I wasn't sure about Patrick. I was um, maybe thinking like a Jason Bateman type. Okay. And then, uh, like Florence Pugh as, as Cassidy. Oh, okay. That seems like the appropriate age. Or you could actually grab one of those Disney stars, which is like. A like, Jeanette McCurdy. Or, or yeah, or Vanessa Hudgens or, uh, Selena Gomez mm. or, you know, just grab, grab one of the spring breakers. Get them, get them in there. Rachel Corinne. Or, or grab one of the, one of, you know, any one of those kids from, from Disney or Nickelodeon and have them, have them do it. Because then that adds like an extra layer of metatextual awareness. Can I tell you, did you watch Ricky's the Nicky or no? No. Don't, don't. It's not I good. I wouldn't, you, you should know already that I was No, but we almost did the other night. Who, me and you? At the draft. No, that would that did not almost happen. No, it did because I was like, I don't want to watch that because I have to watch it again for Zach Attack. And Matt was like, so if you really, the Reverend, not the Reverend, the Reverend, also the Reverend, <laughs> the Honorable Judge Matterly, said, so if you if we put this on right now, you won't watch. It. I was like, I'd rather watch something else. So we watch Booty Call. Yeah, I would have. I feel like I would have vetoed because D was like, it's it's funny. Booty, yeah, no, Booty Call was great though. Mm. Oh Jesus Christ! But Get over yourself. The buddy. best, <laughs> the best line in Ricky Sinicki. Zach Efron says, what is happening right now? I feel like Justin ba- Jason Bateman in every episode of Ozark. That's funny. And it's just like a very specific or just like that show is not good, but like crazy things happen every episode. Yeah. He has to figure that out. I'm like, this is a very like precise. I love Ozark because it's not good. There's something about Ozark. You got to finish it, man. There's something about Ozark where it's like because the writing is bad and is it means that anything can happen. It's like they might just like that kid might just shoot someone for no reason. And he, he has multiple and, times. And and, and 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 so like there's something really, really great about about um I appreciate bad writing because um bad writing seems more uh unpredictable than good writing a lot of the time. So there was a sort of famous Vince Gilligan quote where he talks about the writing style for breaking bad is that they would write themselves into a corner and figure out how to get out of it. Ozark writes themselves <laughs> into a corner and then like fucking blows a hole in the wall. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, like yeah, yeah. we got new places to go. Um, but I don't know if people, I don't know if we've ever talked about Ozark and maybe on the Patreon episodes. So we don't we shut down the Patreon. It no longer exists. But every time we would do an episode, we would go get lunch and we would watch one episode of Ozark. And we have been at the start of the fourth and final season for a year. Every time we sit down, we're just like we don't want to watch Ozark. Feel like watching Ozark. We've got like twelve episodes yeah, left. Yeah, we should just do it. We're so close. Yeah. We have an email address, lottery at Cage Club. Dining. Write in about Ozark. I don't care. Meg's reaction to something new under the sun. Egg wrote in, I loved this book. Although it is not. Did you talk to her about this book or no? Not really. She emailed us in, I think, before I, I began the yeah, book. Yeah, 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 yeah. She for sure did. Although it is not listed as such on Goodreads, I want to say that I'd put the book in the horror genre, which I feel like maybe would apply to many books this season, possibly. Yeah, maybe. Which I didn't know going into it. It was a happy surprise for me once I started. Is she a big horror? A little bit. Person? Okay. 
I like that Patrick started developing symptoms of ROAD, the dementia, before we knew what it was and before we got a list of symptoms. I also like how at the end, the two people who caused all this, Jay and Brenda, were also falling victim to it. But that was more of a Pyrrhic victory than anything because they're still causing untold horrors unto the world. I don't know if they are. I think they're just like middle management in this or they're middle. Ma- yeah, but it's the, it's like it's, it's, the, bana- it's, it's the banality it's, of evil, man. Yeah. Middle, middle management is the, I know. is the horror. But they're like it's like a pyramid scheme that they have bought into. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they're still causing untold horrors into the world. But I like the implicit message that capitalism ruins everything, even the people who follow its rules. The ending felt perfect and cinematic to me. Just everything coming together and knowing it's the end of humanity a few quote-unquote pages after the book ends. The timing of Allison finding that water, synthetic water, is in the taps instead of regular water. And Cassidy succumbing to the road delusion was the perfect end to a good horror novel. We didn't talk about that, that Allison's pouring water right. in the yeah, 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 commune yeah. kind of place. And she's mm-hmm. just like, this isn't. Yeah, and she she calls Nora over and is like, look at this. Does this water look like the water to, she's like, to you? It's fine. Also, just- there is also a conspiracy theory about there being fluoride in the water, like in the real world. Yes. That is a very like uh, – bad thing i don't know like like tinfoil hat paranoia uh stuff and and so like i don't know whenever there's like stuff like that i choose i elect to not read it because to quote a thing that we talk about a lot in x files like i do kind of want to believe that there's like weird stuff out there and i don't want to like like i'd like to think that i'm intelligent enough or rational enough to not believe that stuff but also part of me is like I might believe it. Like, I don't want to fall down a rabbit hole. Yeah. I mean, I, I know, n- kind of know a guy, but like I used to do this, um, uh, we do, we would do this nature thing, um, like a nature course where we would go and, this, and, and we would sit and listen to this guy. He'd, he'd walk us through, uh, the woods and he would show us where, like what we could eat and what we could like, you know, he would tell us everything that was going on in nature and, and like he'd, you know, pick things off and be like, here, chew on this for or like, you know, he'd show us all this really, and it was really great. And we went to a bunch of them and like, he became like a real like anti-vax guy mm. and all that stuff, because it's like, that is in many ways the path yes. that those yeah. guys take, yeah. because it's like, I'm not, my body is pure. Nature can heal me. I don't need your modern science. Like modern science, if anything has fucked everything up, which is the, uh, a, course that i've taken many times on this show saying that like the attempt to fix things is is the thing that truly fucks us up like the i i i think those guys are wrong right um and and so that's like you know i don't think alexander Kleeman is saying the fluoride in the water stuff but but it is like it is sort of playing on that idea of like they're putting things in our water you know it is yes uh which i you know i love cons- uh, obviously what? we're x-files guys like i love conspiracy yeah. theory fiction yeah yeah. I just hate conspiracy theories in the real world. Yes. I think there's also something that's just like, what's the thing that we all need, literally need to survive? Yeah. And that also we have kind of no control over. Right. Like we just turn the fall. Like there's, we don't really, unless we literally have a thing in our basement that pumps up water, but like we can't control really what goes in. Like we don't know if that's real water or synthetic water. Yeah. You gotta, there's the degree to which you approach everything in in the world with confidence that people are not fucking you over. Cause I think like if you do, like you just can't, you're paralyzed by exactly. fear. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, Meg, let's, let's hear the rest of the email. I'm sorry for interrupting. Look, we get the emails to inspire conversation. <laughs> She's doing that. I liked how the book seemed to follow the pattern of Cassie Keen and then that there was no real payoff with that. Sure. They solved the mystery, but it didn't change the course of the novel. Is did they solve the mystery? I mean, just the world is fucked. It's no, the they, they solved, they solved the mystery of what Brenda and Jay oh, were right. doing. Halfway through right? the book, yeah. Which is like a real, like, it reminds me of there's like this one episode of Monk where, uh, I think it's Jay Moore is in it where like, uh, uh, like Monk lays out like the really complex murder. Mm-hmm. And like points out all the ways that the, that everything happened, but it is like still like all the pieces fit, but it's like incredibly far fetched and like, and it ends with Jay Moore just going like, uh, "No, you're right. Good luck proving it in court." And he just leaves. Yeah, and it's just, it's just like, yeah, that's what reality actually is. It's not any of these Hercule Poirot mysteries where he like you know fits all the pieces together. It's like, yeah, but none of none of what you just said holds up in court. Or 
as we saw in the overstory, even if you win in court, you still lose long term. Yeah, if you're going against corporations and things mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, so they solve the mystery, but then it's like, doesn't matter. Corporations are stupid. They're still, They're way still too, getting way richer. You're still fucked. For yep. you. Yeah. Sure, they solved the mystery, but that didn't change the course of the novel, and no one was held responsible for their actions like they would if they were actually in a Cassie Keene episode. Would you watch Kid Detective? No, I... It's, it's, did you watch Veronica Mars? It, I did, but Veronica Mars was, uh, like... I, I mean... I feel like I was both too old and too young for Veronica Mars when I watched it, because I was just like... This feels kind of childish, but I'm also not like getting the other layer to it. I love Veronica Mars. I, Ver, Ver, Veronica Mars, like the especially like the first season of Veronica Mars, is like a per it, it perfectly balances the mystery per episode and the overarching mystery, mm. like in in a way that and and Rob Thomas writes great dialogue and and it's uh he also did Party Down right that's the same guy yes it is good like it's a show that I like. That's a show that I like, but the amount I thought I was going to like it going in turned yeah. out to be a lot less than I actually did. Maybe yeah. I just set the bar too high for and myself. And it's also another it's another show that like first two seasons are brilliant, third season you're just like, what is going on with this? And then there's a reboot too. Yeah, which is then it's also like, what is this? I don't Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite scenes, Egg writes in the book, is when Patrick is talking to the lead actor about how he's the author and the book is based on this real life, and the guy goes, quote, I didn't even realize this was based on real events. And then a little while later, you find out that the movie has changed to be about a supernatural haunting. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I guess it's, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a ghost story. It's like, very no, funny. Now it's literally a ghost story. Yeah, yeah, that's very funny. I'd love to read a sequel to this novel to follow creepy Nora around to find out what's happening with those weird blue flowers. I feel like I don't have much to say about this novel, but that's because I don't think that there's anything I didn't like about it. I like that there are still mysteries to mull over after reading the novel. I liked how fleshed out all of the characters were. All in all, a great novel, and I really enjoyed listening to it. Oh, she listened. Yeah. Shout out to the egg. Uh, also, I think it would make a. Pr- it's. A, I think it would make a pretty easy adaptation. For sure. Like you could you could make it into a movie that would work really well really quickly. But I don't know that people I. I wonder if people would like the non-ending or if you would have well, to change I, if the if the irony would be you would change the ending to a thing that's about changing endings. I think also you would like it would go through the adaptation process where stuff gets chucked and I think you might end up losing Allison and Nora entirely and having Cassidy and Patrick in a like pseudo romantic thing and and you know I think it does feel yeah. like the story here, like I think you adapt it and you almost lose the eco thing entirely. It becomes, Ugh. but like you can see that happening, right? Like it, where it's like a noir about a former child star, like it's kid detective kind of. Yeah. But about this girl who used to be famous and now is less famous, trying to come back. She uncovers this mystery because this other guy is there and then they also come to it anyway. Yeah. And like it's kind of about eco, but not really about eco. You don't have as much with the wildfires and things like that, maybe. No. And you lose the arm and horseshoe. They're, that's fine. I mean, they're they're kind of goofy. Wait, so this is ham. They're, they're Rosen. Yeah, they're, they're, they're Rosen. Rosen Gildenstern, Gildenstern, clearly. Which yes. in the before the book, there's like a quote yes. about them, right? So yes. from from the Tom Stoppard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep breathing. Oh, shit. You just dro- <laughs> dro- dropped it in there. We had like three minutes of conversation there that I was like so worried you were that going gonna, to just crime gonna, and end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then I kept – like there were, there, were even, there were even like contemplative silences where oh, you could have just like ah, easily – Ah, you got me. We're talking about crimes. Um, yeah, the, the today's crime is uh, siphoning gasoline out of an automobile. Sweet. For your own use. <laughs>